Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Welcome to our lesson on adding rational numbers. Let's get started. First off, what you will expect to see in this lesson, we'll have a small lesson on what rational numbers are and how to add rational numbers. And then we'll have some practice questions for you to solve. And then I'll give the full solution so you can check your work. Rational numbers. First off, let's talk about what they look like. Here are some examples of rational numbers. You can have negative 16, negative 19, positive 3. So positive and negative numbers. But you can also add in decimals and fractions. And that's what's going to change things up in this lesson versus the lesson about adding integers. So we are adding, we are including decimals and fractions in this lesson. If you need a quick recap on just adding integers without the decimals and fractions, go back to the previous lesson and then come to this one. Quick visual for all you visual learners. This is what it looks like when you're adding on a number line. If I had this question, negative 3.5 plus 9 plus negative 4.5, on a number line it would look like this. I would start at 0 and move to the left 3.5 or negative 3.5. See how I end up there in between negative 3 and negative 4. Then I would add 9 to that, bringing me up to 5.5 or 5.5. Then when I add on that negative 4.5, it brings me back towards the left, another 4.5, ending me on the point 1. This is an example of adding these numbers on a number line. And you can see that we do end up sort of in the middle at some points, and that's what rational numbers do. They can sometimes have a portion of a number. It's not nice integer numbers all the time. When we add, we do have the same rules when adding integers and adding rational numbers, that if you have the same sign, you end up with that sign at the end when you're adding. So here's an example. If I have 11.2 plus 5.3, I'll end up with 16.5. It's a positive plus a positive, so I get a positive answer. If I had negative 11.2 plus negative 5.3, when I add them together, I get negative 16.5. A negative plus a negative gives me a negative, an even bigger negative. In fraction form, it would look like this. Negative 11 and 2 tenths plus 5, negative 5 and 3 tenths equals negative 16 and 5 tenths. This simplifies down to negative 16 and a half, which is the same as negative 16.5. Notice all three of these questions are basically the same. They're just written in slightly different ways, but it shows every time that if the signs are the same, you find the sum and keep the sign. In other words, if it's a positive plus a positive, you end up with a positive. If it's a negative plus a negative, add the numbers together, keep the sign as a negative. Let's look at what happens when we have different signs. In this case, we have 4.3 plus negative 2. That would give us a positive 2.3. If I had negative 4.3 plus 2, I would end up with negative 2.3. And I'm going to show this to you in fraction form as well. Negative 4 and 3 tenths plus 2 gives me negative 2 and 3 tenths. If you look at these three examples, you'll see the pattern of what we're doing. If the signs are different, you take the two numbers and subtract them or find the difference. You keep the sign from the larger absolute value. Or in other words, if there are more positives, your final answer is going to be positive. If there's more negatives, your final answer is going to be negative. Look at our first example. There's 4.3 positives. There's only two negatives, so there's more positives than negatives, so our final answer will be positive. In our final answer, or final example, we have four and 3 tenths 
negatives. We only have two positives. That means we have more negatives than positives, so our final answer will end up being negative. That's what I mean by you keep the sign of the larger absolute value. Whichever number is bigger, that's the sign that you're keeping. All right. Now we have some practice. I have three questions here. Two of them, one of them has different signs. Two of them have the same signs. I've got a fraction in there. What I want you to do at this point is pause the video, try these three questions out on your own, and then come back to look at the answers. Three, two, one, go for it. Welcome back. I hope you're not one of those people who just kept watching the video and didn't do the work. If you did, seriously, pause it. All right, let's take a look. 14.4 plus negative 5.6. Before I even finish that question, I can know, is my answer going to be positive or negative? I look at the two numbers, 14.4 and 5.6, and I ask myself which of those numbers is bigger, 14.4 or 5.6? Well, 14.4 is a larger number. So because the positive number is going is larger, the final answer is going to be positive. So I'll subtract those two numbers, 14.4 minus 5.6, and that leaves me with 8.8. .8. Again, notice that my number is positive, my final answer, because there are more positives than there are negatives. There's 14.4 positives, only 5.6 negatives. Let's move on to question number two. Negative 10.3 plus negative 8.6. In this case, I'm adding a negative plus a negative. So I'm going to get an even larger negative. I just add the numbers together, keep the sign. So 10.3 plus 6.8 gives me 17.1. The answer is going to be negative. This is the first question. Um, these two sample questions that we've just done are the first ones where we've actually needed to... Um, borrow or carry over and move kind of along our decimal. So hopefully we know at this point the rules for adding decimals. If those questions were a little bit confusing for you, again, go back to some of the earlier lessons on adding decimals, adding positive decimals, and that will help adding and subtracting positive um, decimals. Our final question is a fraction question. I've made this question have common denominators to keep things a little bit easier um, as far as adding fractions, because this isn't really a lesson on adding fractions. Let's look at that example. Negative 10 and 3 fifths plus negative 4 and 1 fifth. It's a negative and a negative, so I'm going to just add the numbers together and my final answer will be negative. So we should add 10 plus 4 is 14, 3 fifths plus 1 fifth gives us 4 fifths, so our final answer is 14 and 4 fifths, and it will be negative. Negative plus a negative gives us a negative. Make sure to remember that when you're looking at integers and rational numbers. A couple things to remember. If they have the same signs, you find the sum. If the signs are different, find the difference. And remember the rules for working with fractions, adding and subtracting. We did not go over those rules in this lesson, but you need to know them if you are going to be adding and subtracting fractions. And a big part of rational numbers is fractions. That's actually the definition of rational numbers, numbers that can be written as fractions. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.